For those of you who clicked on this video by accident, you might be wondering what I'm doing dressed as a puto. Well, it's February, and because I love holidays, especially those of a religious nature, I love doing holiday specials. So, here's William's super short history of St. Valentine's Day. Now, let's start off with what a cupid is. You might remember me calling myself a puto when most of the world recognizes this as a cherub. When actually a cherub is an angel with the head of a man, lion, ox, and eagle. And they have a whole lot of wings and eyes on said wings. And a puto is the chubby baby thing. Cupid is the Roman god of love. And in Greece, he's known as Eros, who will strike you with his bow. The lead-tipped ones create hate, and the gold-tipped ones create love. He would use both to create mischief. Because to Greek philosophers, mostly in Athens, they viewed love as a kind of madness, like it's a disease. And I could do a whole video on Greek ideas of love. So maybe next year. Eros is either a young adult or in his late teens. Also, Eros has a brother, Anteros, the god of requited love. And the two were also kind of rivals, but if one were to die, the other would as well. He is the son of Aphrodite, although sometimes Eros is an elder god, while also still being her son. So therefore, she can boss him around. But the Athenians were really misogynistic, so they decided to downgrade Eros into being a baby. They thought it would make more sense that way if he was being bossed around by a powerful woman. And later the Romans took control and adopted Eros as Cupid and kept him exclusively in the pudgy baby form. And Rome is very important to the history of this holiday. After all, it is where we get the word romance from. Some claim Valentine's Day is actually a Christianized version of a Roman holiday called Lupercalia also called Dies Februatus, which is where February gets its name. Like most ex-Christian thing is actually why pagan thing theories, it's total rubbish. For one, while yes, Lupercalia was a holiday to celebrate the fertility god Lupercus, and yes, it is celebrated on February 15th, but it has more to do with livestock and the practices have nothing to do with each other. Tell me if this sounds like any Valentine's tradition you know of. Goats and young dogs are led to a cave and then the poor things get skinned and sacrificed. These two lads would wear the skins in order to resemble Lupercus. Then, using the tip of the sword, they would smear some of the animal's blood on their foreheads. Apparently they would break out laughing? I don't know. And later in Roman history, they would hit women of birthing age with the skins, supposedly to make giving birth less of a pain. You might notice that this has less to do with a holiday of love and more to do with a cheesy horror movie. No, the real origin is the commonly accepted one. Who would have guessed? And in case you're not familiar with that story, I will recount it for you. But keep in mind, most scholars don't think this story is exactly what happened, but I think it's interesting and it's the best we have. In the 260s AD, the Roman Emperor Claudius II had a very large army. He noticed that a large amount of his army were homesick and longing for their wives. Now, a more compassionate ruler upon seeing this would maybe disband the army. But no, not this guy. Instead, Claudius decides that soldiers are no longer allowed to get married. But this one priest named Valentine, which, by the way, was a very common name back then, so it's a little hard to tell which saint this was. Anyway, Father Valentine didn't think that was very fair, so he was like, screw it, I'm going to marry these crazy kids anyway, because that's what God would want me to do. So Emperor Claudius finds out and arrests Father Valentine and sends him to prison, and this is where things get a little unclear. So either 
St. Valentine and the jailkeeper's daughter fell in love with each other, and he sent her a note signed to your Valentine, and that's why we send each other cards on the anniversary of his death. Or the soldiers and their wives sent him thank you cards and flowers and slipped them through the bars of his jail cell window. Another more agreed upon story is that Claudius Gothicus, aka Claudius II, had A, a son who was blind, or B, a daughter who was blind. And Valentine agreed to cure it if they converted. So he did, and Claudius got huffy and executed him. According to the Nuremberg Chronicle, He was severely beaten with clubs, and he was beheaded on the 14th day of the month of February. Valentine's feast day was not commonly associated with love until the late medieval era, because the first time it was associated with love in a written form came later with writers like Shakespeare and Chaucer. And if it was a Christian version of Lupercalia, then the association of February 14th in love would have happened almost immediately. But after Chaucer's observations that many birds mate on February 14th, in his book, Parliament of Fowls. For this was on St. Valentine's Day, when every fowl comes there, his mate to take. Of every species that men know, I say, and then so huge a crowd did they make. That earth and sea and tree and every lake was so full that there was scarcely space for me to stand. So full was all the place. This inspired many nobles who were nature lovers to send each other love notes on St. Valentine's Day in reference to Chaucer's observations, such as one Charles Duke of Orleans, who was imprisoned in the Tower of London after losing some battle, and he sent his wife a love letter. I suppose to draw the parallels further, he refers to her as his Valentine, twice. And look, he even included a little love heart. Aww. Enjoy this excerpt from his letter. My very gentle Valentine, since for me you were born too soon, and I for you was born too late, God forgives him who estranged me from you for the whole year. I am already sick of love, my very gentle Valentine. Here's another fun fact. According to FolkloreSociety.com, it was believed that the first person someone sees on St. Valentine's Day will be their true love, which explains the temporary blindness that seems to occur on this day. Just me. And even the bard himself references this when Ophelia sings. <laughs> Tomorrow is St. Valentine's Day. All in the morning bedtime, and I, a maid at your window, to be your valentine. Then up he rose, and donned his clothes, and dumped the chamber door. Let in the maid that out and maid never departed more. On a lighter note, in the Victorian era, it was common for people to abuse the tradition of sending valentines to each other, in order to insult their enemies with vinegar valentines. These would range from comical jests to actually intending to insult the receiver, and would have illustrations not of lovers, doves, or cupids, but ugly caricatures. Unfortunately, many suffragettes would receive these cards insulting their intelligence and chocolate entered the scene in North America when the Cadbury Company, yes, the one that makes the chocolate eggs, led by the founder's son, Richard Cadbury, proposed the idea of heart-shaped boxes. So even when you finish your chocolates, you can keep the boxes as a memento of sorts. Although before this, some did connect love and chocolate, this certainly helped. But why is the heart the organ of romance? And why is the anatomical heart and the cartoon heart so different? Well, like most things about history and culture, we don't know for sure, but there are many likely theories. What does love have to do with this? Well, some claim that the heart's association with love is simply the fact 
that your heart racing is a symptom of infatuation. But so is your palms getting sweaty, and I don't see hands decorating cards. Some say the Romans believed that there was a finger that was directly connected to the heart, and they would put rings on each other's fingers during weddings, but no such thing exists. And the Egyptians thought that the heart is where the mind slash soul is kept, and therefore emotion, and therefore love, all sorts of things like that. But I think the most likely reason of all is the fact that the heart represents importance. As in, let's get to the heart of the matter. And as time went on, God's love for humanity was seen as the most important thing. So Jesus, Mary, saints, and other religious figures would sometimes be depicted with their hearts out of their chest. But why is this a heart? How is this a heart? People look at the two round parts of the heart and think, hmm, the breasts have two round parts, and so does the butt. And if you turn it upside down, it looks like male organs. But this is kind of stupid because lots of things in your body are symmetrical and curved. There is a plant called Silphium that acts as a natural contraceptive. And apparently its seeds are shaped like hearts, and the Romans used it so much, it's extinct. How do you even do that? But lots of seeds have heart shapes, so this might be a coincidence. Aristotle once described the heart as having three chambers and a dent in the middle. People tried illustrating this because the church didn't want people cutting up dead bodies willy-nilly. So this is the best description that we had, and then we ended up with this through years of simplification. Also apparently he described it as the most important because it was the first to form in chicken embryos, but also he said it was hot and dry, and people wonder why I hate this son of a, <coughs> of a donkey ruining thousands of years of knowledge, this misogynistic peanut butter brain, and discrediting my boy Democritus. <laughs> Doves are a symbol of love because they were associated with Aphrodite and also their mating season is in late February. Similarly, bluebirds are a symbol of love and prosperity because their colors are associated with things like hope, honesty, purity, and innocence according to www. T H A R Y E R B I R D I N G dot com and according to www dot on the feeder dot com in China they represent good luck and according to www dot birds and sand blossoms dot com their nesting season begins in February. As we all know, roses mean love, and some of us know that the different colors mean different types of love. Yellow represents platonic love, white love represents loyalty and marriage, pink is family, red is passion, blue is unique, black is mystery, rose buds are young love. But why is it the rose? Well, according to Roses, their early history and symbolism, investigation by Roger Phillips, Quest for the Rose 1993, when Aphrodite rose from the sea after an odd series of events, the foam turned into white roses. He theorizes that the thorns represent the pain of love, and they die very quickly like the fleeting nature of love. And when Aphrodite went to rescue Adonis, the god of male beauty, from a wild boar, a bit of her thigh got caught on a rose bush causing her to bleed, and the blood made the roses red. But whatever love means to you, I hope you enjoy your Valentine's Day. And if you're not Christian, then enjoy your February 14th, I guess. <laughs>